welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, I've got to make a move. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are these sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at the lack of their faith. Mark 6, 2 through 6. It's so easy today to become famous. All you need is a cell phone and a good internet connection. And poof, you've gone viral. You're the next internet sensation. Yes, you're the next mackerel, the next candy, or even the next ghetto Michael Jackson. However, it's amazing to note that many times gifted people go unrecognized. There are so many people that are gifted, talented, and the world knows them. We can't stop listening to their music. We can't stop listening to their preaching, teaching. We can't stop using their devices and equipments. However, while the world recognizes these people, you'd be amazed to note that many times the last persons to recognize who they have with them are the persons who were closest to them. Yes, at times when you are too close to someone, you tend to not see them as being more than what you know. So therefore, in order for them to see, you've got to go out a bit further in the distance for them to get the full view of who was with them. Many persons in church have had this experience. I know of a young man who started out in his church as just being a brother. He packed out the mics. He sang on the choir. He was just a brother. The Lord told him at an early age that he called him to preach. However, he had difficulty believing this to be true because in his own church, he was not even preaching. The same brother would move on to be the vice youth president, then the president of the youth department. He became an evangelist, a Sunday school teacher, the media department monitor, the host of a radio program, and even the national youth president of his organization, just to name a few things. Yet with all these great achievements in his local church, there are those who saw him as nothing more than just that brother who packed out the mics, and they weren't afraid to let it be known. It reached the point that he started to believe in himself that he was nothing more. But then the Lord made a move. By the inspiration of God, his pastor moved him from that church and gave him an empty building to revive a work that was dead. Along with the help of his wife, he kept working and working and working and the ministry began to grow. Souls started to be baptized. Backsliders started to be restored. Then he started to realize that when the Lord told him over 20 years earlier that he called him to be a preacher, it was not by accident. He would live to see many of the persons who were his opposers and those who criticized him came and confessed that the Lord's anointed was with them and they had no clue. That same brother that had those experiences is talking to you on this mic right now. Yes, I know what it feels like to feel stagnant, feeling like your life ain't going nowhere no matter how hard you try, feeling the calling of God and the push of ministry in your life, but yet your environment is saying something else. But I found solace in the Word of God because when I realized that what I was going through was nothing new because Jesus himself had already been through it. Ah, oh, we hail him today as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but his siblings saw him as a madman. <laughs> yes, they could not see that their brother was the Messiah. Not only did his siblings, but his entire community that he grew up with could not accept that this Jesus that grew up with us, this carpenter, is now a great teacher, a great preacher. But they became offended that he would dare to be something more than just a carpenter. There are times in your life when in order to get to the next level, you've got to be willing to step out and fulfill your destiny, fulfill your purpose. Because if you don't do that, you'll always remain nothing more than the carpenter. The quote of the day, many times those closest to us are the last to recognize that greatness is in their presence. As you go today, go knowing that you've got to be willing to make a move. For some of you, this might be a physical move, but for some, it might be a mental move. But whatever it is, make the move and fulfill your destiny. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. Hey, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light and
the dark name. 